September has been a wild month, with a whirlwind of space events that have kept astronomers and stargazers on the edge of their seats, and it's far from over. The month started with a surprise, with asteroid 2024 RW1, discovered at the last minute, leaving many to argue about the strength and reliability of our planetary defense systems. Measuring around 15 meters, this asteroid's sudden appearance serves as a reminder of the vast number of space rocks lurking in the solar system, waiting to be detected before it's not too late. While this small asteroid posed no threat to Earth, another space rock detected at nearly the last minute could have caused substantial damage had it collided with Earth. Yeah, we are talking about this asteroid which was detected in August 2024 and came relatively close to Earth in mid-September. However, the asteroid safely passed by Earth on September 17th at a distance of approximately 1 million kilometers, around 2.6 times the distance between the Earth and the Moon. If that wasn't enough, September also treated us to a stunning celestial spectacle on September 18th, a supermoon lunar eclipse. And two weeks after the partial lunar eclipse, an annular solar eclipse will occur on October 2nd, which will be visible along a narrow path stretching from the Pacific Ocean to the Atlantic Ocean, passing over Easter Island and southern Argentina. But September isn't done yet, no sir. It has two more tricks up its sleeve, and they are the most anticipated ones. Let's start with the first one first. Earth is getting a new moon, and it's sticking around for a good couple of months. Welcome to territory. This is your space. The Arjuna asteroids refer to a specific group of near-Earth asteroids, or NEOs, that are part of the larger population of asteroids in our solar system. These asteroids range in size from small boulders to larger rocky bodies, with their orbits often influenced by gravitational forces from planets like Jupiter, sometimes bringing them closer to Earth. Yes, sometimes these asteroids approach so close to Earth, they get captured by Earth's gravity, becoming what we call a temporary moon or a mini-moon. And this month, Earth is going to grab itself one of these mini-moons, a tiny asteroid called 2024 PT5. During a routine monitoring of potentially hazardous space rocks on August 7th, researchers at the Asteroid Terrestrial Impact Last Alert System, or ATLAS, detected the asteroid. Unlike Earth's moon, which has accompanied our planet for around 4 billion years, asteroid 2024 PT5 is tiny, about the size of a bus, measuring about 10 meters in length. The space rock is predicted to make a horseshoe-like orbit around Earth instead of a full rotation. It will begin its 57-day orbit around Earth on September 29th, and it will end on November 25th. After that, it will return to Arjuna Belt and is expected to make a return to the planet's orbit in 2055. But the real question on people's minds is, is there any chance of the asteroid hitting Earth? According to astrophysics professor Adam Frank from the University of Rochester, at this point, there is nothing to worry about the asteroid coming into the Earth's orbit. What we're having here is an asteroid, which is basically a flying mountain in space that usually orbits close to the Earth, or orbits in the same distance from the Sun as the Earth, and it's getting captured by the Earth's gravity, and they'll be part of the Earth-Moon system, he said. It'll orbit the Earth for maybe about two months, and then they'll get flung back out, so we get a little, teeny tiny, little moon for about two months. Because if something this size were to hit the Earth, you know, it would be an apocalypse of a biblical kind. So really what we've got here is something that's about the moon's orbit or so. It's about that kind of distance. So in no way is it going to get close enough to threaten us in any way. Here's a fun fact. Asteroid 2024 PT5 may in fact be a piece of Earth's moon, as its motion suggests it could be a piece of ejecta from an impact on the moon, according to Paul Chodas, director of NASA's Center for Near-Earth Object Studies. Unfortunately, we won't be able to see the mini-moon with the naked eye, because it is pretty small and professional telescopes might be required. To stay up to date on the mini-moon as it approaches our planet, subscribe to Territory Space, and now, on to the next celestial spectacle. By the year 600 BCE, the pyramids of Giza had already stood for over 2,000 years, silently witnessing the rise of human civilization, growing in rapid and diverse ways. It was during this time that our fascination with the stars began to turn into a study. 
The Babylonians recorded the movements of celestial bodies like the sun, moon, and planets, and developed a calendar that could predict lunar and solar eclipses. Meanwhile, the Greeks began to question the myths surrounding the world. They began to propose that the Earth was spherical, based on observations like the shape of the Earth's shadow on the moon during eclipses. Astronomy was just beginning to take shape. And it was during this time that a star, 2600 light years away, erupted in a dramatic explosion. Now, 2600 years later, we are going to witness that explosion in the night sky. Imagine looking up at the night sky and noticing a bright new star where none had been before. This was the experience of Burchard, the abbot of Erzberg in Germany, over 800 years ago, when he observed a faint star that for a time shone with great light. The star he saw was T, Coronae Borealis, a variable star in the constellation Corona Borealis, also known as the Northern Crown. A variable star is a star that appears to change brightness from Earth's perspective over time. TCRB is 2,600 light years from Earth, meaning that the events we observe today actually occurred 2,600 years ago. Now, during the prime of their lives, most stars are powered by nuclear fusion reactions deep inside their cores. However, Coronae Borealis is well past its prime and is now a stellar remnant known as a white dwarf. But Coronae Borealis is not alone. It's a rare and fascinating binary star system where it's locked with its stellar companion in a cosmic dance. The primary star is a white dwarf, a remnant of a once massive star that has exhausted its nuclear fuel and collapsed into a dense, Earth-sized object. This white dwarf, although seemingly quiet, harbors an immense gravitational pull, drawing in material from its companion star, a red giant. The red giant is an older star, bloated and cool, shedding its outer layers as it nears the end of its life. This mass transfer is the critical piece of the puzzle in understanding why Coronae Borealis is known as a recurrent nova. A recurrent nova? Does that mean it explodes over and over again? Yes, every 80 years, T. Coronae Borealis puts on a show for us here on Earth. As the white dwarf draws off material from the red giant, it gradually accumulates on its surface. Over decades, this process leads to the buildup of a critical mass of hydrogen on the white dwarf's surface. Once enough hydrogen has been gathered, a powerful thermonuclear reaction ignites, a runaway fusion event that causes the star to explode in a spectacular nova. When this happens, the energy released makes TCRB shine 1,500 times brighter than usual, making it visible to the naked eye in the night sky. The last such explosion occurred in 1946, and as we pass the 80-year mark, the world eagerly anticipates the coming eruption. When TCRB goes nova, the explosion releases an enormous amount of energy, blasting the accumulated material into space at high speeds. This creates a shell of gas that expands outward, and the system temporarily becomes one of the brightest objects in the sky. After the explosion subsides, the process starts all over again, as the white dwarf continues to pull in material, repeating the cycle. But how are we so sure that we are going to witness it soon? TCRB's previous two eruptions in 1866 and 1946 exhibited similar patterns. Approximately a decade before each explosion, the star's brightness increased slightly, reaching what is known as a high state, followed by a brief dimming or dip about a year before the eruption. The star entered its high state in 2015, and the pre-eruption dip was detected in March 2023, which has put astronomers on alert. The reasons behind these patterns remain some of the intriguing mysteries surrounding TCRB. But wait, once it explodes, we won't have much time. Yes, once Coronae Borealis erupts, the peak brightness will be fleeting, lasting only a few hours. Within a week, the star will dim significantly, requiring binoculars to observe it. It's highly likely that an amateur astronomer will be the first to spot the eruption of the star and notify the professional astronomy community. These dedicated amateurs often monitor stars from their own observatories, filling crucial gaps in the observation of the night sky. During its peak brightness, the nova will be visible to the naked eye, though binoculars or a small telescope will offer a more detailed view. Despite not reaching the intensity of the brightest stars or planets, the nova will be a remarkable and memorable sight for sky watchers and amateur astronomers alike. 
And more than anything, it is kinda a once-in-a-lifetime cosmic event. So, look up.